So first of all, good afternoon. Number one, the partnership was an equity partnership where we owned about 49% of the company. And, you know, with the Canadian market, and yes, I've been critical about the Canadian market, how it's grown and what else we need to do there. And, you know, spending nine months with Hexo and getting to know them and the opportunities there, they had some great brands. Hexo did a great job on cost cutting, but it was now time to us for us to move our team in to be able to market the brands, to build the brands. And you know what? The Canadian cannabis business really needs a leader there to take hold of the marketplace there. And with Tilray today and Hexo together, we have close to a 13% share. You know, our challenge is to do something in regards to excise tax, do something how we market to, you know, the Canadian consumers. So it was a good price. We paid $56 million for the outstanding stock. And there's a lot of synergies, a lot of savings. And like I said before, it really gives us a big share in the marketplace. And okay. you know what, Megan, cannabis will legalize in the U.S. And we will ultimately, you know, be out there ready to move into the U.S. from our Canadian business. Uh, I, I want to get to that, too. But first, I mean, Wall Street seems less convinced about this acquisition. Uh, a number of analysts uh, showing some skepticism today. Bernstein writing, it feels like Tilray is running just to stand still as it seeks to gain share and slash costs to survive in the challenging Canadian cannabis market. Your response? So, listen, you have to be that low-cost producer. As you see, you know, we've been the number one in Canada, and we had about 8.5% share, and buying Hexo now gives us 13% share. There's over 1,000 LPs in Canada. There's multiple stores, so consolidation has to happen there. If you come back and look at our other competitors, they're not growing either. So how do you grow? you got to do acquisitions, and with acquisitions, ultimately, you got to grow your share, you got to grow your sales there, and you got to take costs out. There's still, you know, a big business in Canada. It's still a five and a half, six billion dollar business at retail. And we still see a big opportunity there. And what it does, it prepares us for legalization, whether mm. it's in Germany or whether it's in the U.S. OK, Erwin, I, I want to take a turn from where Morgan was going with the questions and, and talk about the macro as we uh, go further into this difficult economic environment. Your CFO talked about controlling what you can control, getting more efficient during this period. But do you find consumers going to inferior goods, you know, to maybe street pot during a time like this? Um, how do you uh, distinguish yourself in a down economy that's got this kind of competition? So, number one, hey, we are selling consumer cannabis cannabis to consumers that goes through some pretty stringent quality control and regulatory. You know, you hear about all this, you know, cannabis that's brought in the illicit market that's laced with fentanyl, laced with other products. You know when you're buying products in Canada that it goes through tremendous regulatory scrutiny, and that's real important today. And I think the biggest challenge in the Canadian market is, listen, 50 percent of it today goes through a legal market. The other 50 percent goes through an illicit market. You know, Tilray paid over $120 million in excise tax together with, you know, to, together with Hexo, we'll pay over $150, $160 million. But, you know, step back for a second. Let's look at Tilray. It's got number one share of cannabis in Canada. We own some of the top beer businesses in the U.S. We own some of the top um, spirits business in Breckenridge Brewery. So, and we have a big medical cannabis business in Europe. So we're a mm -hmm. diversified company in diversified categories that has tremendous opportunities upon legalization of cannabis. Yeah, let's talk about legalization in the U.S. Your expectations for when that could actually happen, and I know there's different steps and different legislation, for example, the SAFE Act that keeps coming and going in terms of being proposed. How are you thinking about that? And is your strategy shifting as we do see some other Canadian cannabis companies uh, start to get creative in terms of how they're plotting out their entrance into this market? Listen, 37 states have it legalized, whether it's recreational or medical cannabis today in the U.S. Ultimately, something's got to happen. You know, I expect within the next couple of days, something come out in Germany in regards to legalization. So whether it's safe bank, whether it's full legalization, whether it's just medical cannabis legalization, something should happen. You can back and look at the tax dollars that Canada you know, is deriving from cannabis. It's tremendous. You can back and look at some of the states where legalization happened, whether it's Colorado, whether it's Washington, and how much it's contributed to tax dollars. 
So with that, we need to legalize cannabis in the U.S. once and for all to straighten out, you know, these different states and what's legal and what's not. We also got to do something about the illicit market out there and why cannabis is coming in here that doesn't go through the quality and regulatory that a regulated cannabis company does.